Hi folks, Larry Reagan here. Thought I'd take a minute and do a little bit of a transition between week one and week two, give you an idea of what we're going to have coming up starting tomorrow morning, and also do a little wrap up on our experience from last week. Um, I know most of you got in to do your intros. As a matter of fact, I think everybody got an intro in. Uh, on assignment two, we had pretty good participation. On assignment three, it started to drop off. And what I wanted to show you was what happens if you don't get your homework done. This guy, this is Watson, he shows up at your door and he wants to see you get your homework done. Okay, so uh, if you can do that, please do. If that doesn't work, let me show you what else would happen here if, uh, if you don't get your homework done. Come here, Crunch. Come here. Come here. So this is the second one who we'll send to the house. Come here, bud. Ugh. If you don't get your homework done. So this is Crunch. And Crunch and Watson live with us at our house here in State College. So he's going to show up and say, make sure you do your homework. Okay? All right. Okay, you guys can go. So a couple things. Uh, great introductions. Uh, wonderful ideas in both of the assignments. And... Um, uh, in particular, I think people really were digging into the Zoom In, Zoom Out article, talking about um, how that affects them at work, how they're thinking about adjusting their work and all, uh, based on that article. And that's that's we've used that for a number of years. It really seems to resonate with people in terms of um, how they're getting things done. And sometimes maybe getting too, too much into the weeds and, and needing to pull back. Uh, and I think you'll find a, a lot of the comments are about that struggle of going and moving back and forth, which we all have to do throughout our careers. The, the last uh, portion there was really helping you set up um, who you might be interviewing and uh, the kinds of questions you might want to be interviewing, uh, you know, using for your interview. And this is really helpful as well to frame out. We found that over time, people who use those interviews uh, effectively are the ones who are getting in with senior leaders within their institution, uh, capturing their ideas, their insights, but also getting some visibility uh, for themselves within their institution. Uh, the most effective folks then take that interview and they do a follow-up interview once they get back uh, and have a little better idea of, um, of, of what the Institute does. They go back and have another meeting with that leader and uh, do some reflection back. So that's a, that's a really neat thing. Okay, so upcoming this week, we have a couple things to talk about. Uh, first of all, we will have, I'm just going to check my notes here to make sure I get everything covered. Um, in week two, we're going to have the OLC Quality Scorecard. Uh, Kay Shelton and her friends will be doing a session getting to know the Quality Scorecard. If you haven't had an opportunity to dig into this document, this tool, really, it is a phenomenal uh, very comprehensive uh, system for evaluating the the totality of your online learning system. Really effective, and Kay's going to do a super job uh, walking you through that document. Uh, the second thing we want to get into is something called the era of effic efficacy. Uh, Andrew Sheen will be doing that with Mark Brown. That one is really beginning to look a little bit deeper into um, dealing with some of the forces of change going on in your organization, um, how you respond to that, how do you create the most effective uh, learning system possible, and, uh, and maybe where there might be some gaps. And as well, in, in Andrew's exercise, he's going to have you watch some videos, and uh, maybe he's asked a couple of us to provide some videos, and then he'll um, ask you to respond to what we shared with as some of our successful proposals that were brought forward to administration as well as some of those that didn't go so well. Hopefully you'll enjoy those. This might be a tad more work than last week's, uh, but we again, we try to balance this out so we're not overwhelming you. Uh, please uh, try to do your work, check in early, um, get your work done so that it's not hanging over you. By the way, if you didn't finish, uh, Watson and Crunch really won't show up at your door uh, if you didn't your do your homework. Uh, and do know that the faculty members have now moved into week two. So if you do a post back on uh, week one activities, uh, one of the three assignments, uh, you may or may not get a response because the faculty have already moved on to week two. So um, oftentimes we'll go back in and find those and respond to you, but um, we're now we're now moving forward. So um, feel free to do that if you want to make sure that you're getting the, the maximum benefit out of the program. Uh, that's the best way to do it. 
uh, see if there's anything left. Oh yeah, one other thing is I, I just want to plant a seed. When you come up to uh, University Park, also known as State College, Pennsylvania, in August, we're going to do a little um, networking exercise very early on in the program called Give a Gift, Get a Gift. What we're going to ask you to do is to bring a gift from your um, that represents you. It might be something very personal. Uh, it might be something of your institution, or it might even be about your country. Um, and you're going to share that not with everybody. We have 53 people in the program, but you'll be sharing that with three other people uh, in the program. And I'll give you a little bit more details. We did this last year for the first time. I'll, I'll post a little video on here about a little more about the criteria of the gift. But I, I just want to plant a seed for you to begin thinking about uh, what your gift might be. And uh, we're going to ask you to not only share that gift with your colleagues in your small team, but also to share a little bit about why that gift is important to you. Um, so I'll, I'll be giving you more details on that next week. Uh, you can see I'm getting bit up by the mosquitoes here just a little bit. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you last week about myself is that I'm an avid gardener. And um, back over my shoulder here, so I'm going to try to do this without making you um, nauseous there. But you can see my garden um, back in the corner there where my wife and I uh, enjoy um, salads starting in probably mid-April um, up through October, November. Uh, we've got um, tomatoes and peppers and um, asparagus and potatoes, beets, uh, garlic, onion. It's, it's what I do as a way of uh, getting some um, relief from other kinds of work. And uh, I'm, I'm one to be working in the soil and I really thoroughly enjoy it. Sometimes I do better, better years than others. Uh, this year I'm having terrible luck with my peppers, but uh, we've been eating kale till I think we're going to turn green. So there you have it. I'm going to wrap up. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, try to focus on that homework if you can. Get engaged with the community, and we'll see you very soon uh, in the online classroom for IELLOL. Thank you.